Hi, my name is Dr. Simon Trausen, and I am going to very briefly explain the underlying algorithms of genetic improvement of software. GI algorithms are essentially any computational search method that you can apply to a program to find alternatives that improve it somehow, based on an objective and with respect to a given representation. So there are three parts uh, to this that I'll explain a bit further. The objectives uh, that guide the algorithms to what solution is best, or at least better than the others. The search for those solutions, and how we represent solutions in that search. So let's start with the objectives, because if we don't know what we're improving, then what's the point, right? In GI, objectives are generally divided into two groups, non-functional and functional. The non-functional objectives aim to improve physical properties affected by the software, such as speed or execution time, uh, memory uses, usage, uh, bandwidth, and a battery drain, to name a few. Uh, the functional properties, on the other hand, aim to improve logical properties of the software itself. That could include searching for uh, new features to add to the program, and what we in Fixie are most interested in, to fix bugs. The objective has to be meaningfully measured, of course, uh, such that it can differentiate between solutions. Uh, for bug fixing, uh, the first obvious choice is the number of failing unit tests, for example. But whatever it is, though, it has to be able to guide the algorithm's search. Which brings us to the search. And there are a lot of choices for different search methods. The simplest ones start with the program created by the developer, and then step by step try to change the code, sort of, imitating the developer themselves, but just a tad bit faster until improvement is found. Sometimes, um, as you see, uh, backtracking when the change may be made uh, the program worse. Uh, these kinds of methods are iterative in nature, uh, where the search is just uh, considering one solution at a time. Often this is the only feasible method, uh, for example, when uh, computing resources are limited or the nature of the program or the testing system means there's no way to evaluate multiple solutions in parallel. If the resources and the problem allow for it, we could start the search from multiple starting points uh, derived from the developer's code and follow the population of best solutions at each step until either we've exhausted the resources or the search can't improve anymore. There are plenty of variations uh, of these kinds of search methods. They are what we sometimes call swarm search methods. Uh, these are population-based methods where the search uh, maintains a population of solutions and often uh, we refer to it as evolutionary search methods because they are based on uh, survival of the fittest methodology. Another variation of evolutionary search methods uh, chooses, for example, the best solution in each step or generation and mixes them together to create new solutions. This can introduce sort of erratic behavior, but effective because the whole search casts a wide net and might produce solutions that are unexpected or creative. This is an example of evolutionary search method that is considered a global search. So what are these solutions I've been talking about? Uh, they are programs or variations of the initial source code written by the developer, and they can be represented in different ways for the algorithm to manipulate into new solutions. 
We can, for example, represent them as abstract syntax trees. Uh, then each new solution is found by moving around or changing uh, nodes or branches in these trees. And the algorithm can be configured to only follow a logical structure that is guaranteed to be uh, syntactically correct. Uh, some GI approaches work directly on the text-based source code. Uh, then the algorithm makes changes to the source code with string or text operations. Clever configurations can guarantee correct syntax and structure, but they have to be expressed explicitly, unlike for the abstract syntax tree approaches where the abstract syntax tree kind of uh, takes care of that things. Using text-based representations, you can possibly make a lot more uh, fine-grained changes, but it comes at the cost of a significantly larger and sparser search space. That is, uh, good solutions might be harder to find because you find a lot more bad solutions as well. Um, the third present representation I want to mention uses the compiled binary code. Um, for example, Java bytecode or machine code. So uh, the representation or the algorithm um, changes the compiled yeah, binary code, as I said. Usually this representation is only reasonably a reasonable choice when the algorithm is trying to improve a program while it is being executed or where the human written source code is unavailable for some reason. The approach has all the same possibilities as the other two in terms of configurations and search space, but the main disadvantage of using binary code uh, as the representation is that the solutions are the furthest from being directly human readable. And if I had to rank these three approaches in terms of um, in terms of effort involved to make them human readable, then I'd put, as I said, binary as the most effort needed and text-based the least effort needed. Now, I said these are solutions that represent programs. Obviously, when developers are trying to improve their code manually, they just operate on a single instance of a program, like the iterative search method I talked about earlier. When you utilize GI to do the same, just iteratively with a single instance, there really isn't any major disadvantage in having the solution uh, representation as a whole program. Uh, that is, the algorithm keeps track of a whole program solution in the form of an abstract syntax tree, text, or binary. However, as most GI researchers discovered early on in their endeavors, as soon as the search involves more than one solution at a time, um, for example, when utilizing uh, population or evolutionary approaches, then memory becomes quite limiting very fast, trying to keep track of multiple variations of a whole program simultaneously. Today, most, if not all, uh, GI algorithms search for the changes of the program rather than the whole program themselves. So each solution represents a patch, uh, list of edits or diffs to the original human code, regardless of the base representation in as, as in uh, abstract syntax tree, text or binary. It's just then the solution is a change to that base representation. And regardless of what is being improved, So, thanks for watching this video. I hope you've learned something about GI algorithms and I hope it will inspire you to learn more.